A century ago, the Beverly Yacht Club of Marion, Massachusetts was one of the most dynamic sailing operations in New England. And in 1914, they asked Nathaniel Harishoff to design a new day sailor for club members. And the results were spectacular. Only five boats were originally built. One of them quickly disappeared from the scene. So there were only four left. But a devoted group of cognoscente, great sailors, maritime historians, and so on, just kept, kept hanging in about the Buzzards Bay 25. They just thought it was one of the greatest yachts ever created. Seven decades later, interestingly enough, no one had built new ones. But then New England yachtsmen's taste changed. Instead of cruising boats, they turned to fast day sailors with minimal accommodations. This would give them the chance to tear around the bay in the afternoon and then fade back home to the porch and sleep in their own bed instead of a bunk. Not surprisingly, given their shift in taste, the Buzzard Bay 25 experienced a significant revival. Original boats were rebuilt and over a score of new ones constructed. Mink's restoration was the last of the lot. She was discovered languishing in a boatyard on Deer Isle and the new owner just brings a whole different view to what a restoration of a classic boat should be all about. This is the restoration of number 733 Mink. She was quite likely the first Buzzard Bay 25 of the class built. We have worked on the three other sisters that are in existence. Two of the sisters are sailing. They are sailing rebuilds or restorations. One of the sisters, Aria, is now at the Hersham Marine Museum as a reference. She's unrestored, never to go sailing again. A sailing restoration for us often incorporates techniques and methods that we've developed over the years of working on these boats. We'll often make slight modifications or changes to the boats, but utilizing Hershoff techniques to make them last longer and be able to sail longer without suffering some chronic issues that we come across. So in this case though, we're not allowed to do that. Um, Mink will be as close to um, absolutely done the day she was built. She'll be, she'll, the owner wants to experience her as if he was the first owner on the day the boat was delivered. So we're very fortunate that the Hershoff drawings, almost in their entirety, are preserved at the Hart Nautical Museum at MIT in Boston. And fortunately, it's very easy and convenient for us to get all the original drawings that pertain to a particular class. And the level of detail here makes it very easy for us to go through the rebuilding of one of these boats. They include spar plans, species are identified, the fastings are identified, the level of detail is enormous. Um, so normally for us, this is really all we require to restore the boat or rebuild the boat. In this case though, for Mink, we wanted to go to the next level. The owner asked us to be very careful to rebuild the boat the way it was built, not necessarily specified in the drawings. And to do that, we've taken very careful documentation and notes um, as to where the particular fastenings went in the, in the individual components that make up the structure and also to replicate how we install those fastenings um, so that it's exactly the way it was on the day it was built. Here's an example that we found where in the course of shaping the frames and floors, uh, when the molds were set up on the floor in a process that we would call dubbing, using spoke shades and planes I assume, it appears that one of the floor to frame rivets was drilled a little too close to the floor timber edge. And in the process of shaping the frame, they had to get into the rove here. So that's the original rove that was here when we took the boat apart in the original location. And the guys did such a great job of drilling it that it ended up being exactly where it was in the old boat. So when we, when we dubbed this frame and shaped it for the garboard, it ended up being flush with the plank. So it's an example of a manufacturing uh, detail I wouldn't exactly call it a, a flaw because those kinds of things happen all the time, but it's an example of what happens when you're building a boat at a commercial pace in a manufacturing setting. We've got the inventory of all the rigging blocks that we have to see which blocks we have that came from the boat and what their uses are. 
Um, we're also acquiring original blocks from outside this project so the owner can have original hair soft blocks as opposed to replica blocks. All these blocks have these numbers that correspond to the spreadsheet that you saw. Very few of them came with the oh, boat yeah. uh, when the boat came to the shop. But since that time, we've corresponded with some of the former owners of the boat. And fortunately for us, the son of one of the former owners brought in some hardware that his father had saved from mink, likely when they changed the rig. And this is a highlight for the owner as the collection of the hardware and the blocks um, is a real high priority for him. Another example of the level of detail, especially with the fastenings and hardware, these are original nuts and roves. Um, and washers that we remove from the boat and dismantling and you'll notice there are hex nuts as well as square nuts. They were used throughout the boat in different, pl different places. Um, it seems like a mix of square and, and hex is, was pretty common. The guys took very careful notes to, to, to record where the hex nuts were used and where the square nuts were used. And we will do the same. We'll put those back exactly where they were. We were very fortunate to be able to reuse an original cutty top from a sister ship, and that cutty top is from Bagatelle. This is Mink's original deck structure with the decking and the deck beams intact. Another example of a detail that we're gonna copy is these boats were built with pine decks. They're sprung decks or edge bent decks, and they incorporated a half lap where the two pieces of wood would meet on top of a deck beam. And then they used steel nails, and in this case, also a brass screw to fasten the half lap to the deck beam. This happens to be the bulkhead deck beam here. Normally we would scarf these together full length, edge set the piece of wood and still mechanically fasten it. In this case, we're gonna document where every single butt is in the deck, make sure the butts get back to where they were originally, and then execute the half lap just as it was done originally. In the course of dismantling the deck, we found this hackmatack knee had had a shim placed in it between the frame and itself in the course of manufacturing and, and construction. For the owner's benefit, um, and for his requirements, we're going to reinstall that shim just the way it was put in at the hair shop manufacturing company so that he knows when he's sailing this boat that the boat is as close as it could be to the day it was delivered new from the hair shop manufacturing company.